Hey, got three pounds of plums just lying around? Let's make some plum wine. Hi, I'm Charles, and welcome to DIY Fermentation, your channel for doing fermentation on a shoestring budget. Of course, as always, if you like what you see here, please click on the subscribe button, and I will try and do these on a more regular basis. Okay, to make this wine, we need the following ingredients. We need roughly three to five pounds of plums. We need four cups of sugar, wine yeast, your choice, tea bag for tannin, lemon for acid blend, I'm going to be using a peptic enzyme because I'm dealing with fresh fruit. It's going to make things easier for clarification. Straining bags, optional. Gallon of water. Something to do primary fermentation in. Jar, jug, demijohn, carboy, take your pick. To do secondary fermentation in. Airlock with stopper, definitely will help with that. And hydrometer to help us determine our alcohol levels. The first thing we need to do is that we need to wash these plums. They're not organic, so God only knows what chemicals they've used to get them to turn out so well. But just to be on the safe side, I'm gonna just give these a quick little, quick little rinse. kitchen we may as well go ahead and start uh, getting our water heated pour off a little bit for the tea to use as a tannin and the rest of it in the big pot and we want to bring that up to a boil Bag. You may as well go ahead and just simmer that the same amount of time. Cover that up. And wait for that to come to a boil. And now that our water has come to a nice good boil, we're going to have to turn that off. And our tea is looking good, so we can go ahead and turn that off as well. Now would be a good time to go ahead and add our four cups of sugar. Now that that's all well and dissolved, we might as well just go ahead and put in our tannin substitute. Give that a quick stir. We can go ahead and cover that up while it's still nice and warm because we need to go ahead and remove the pits and do a rough chop on our plums. Let's go ahead and get these plums prepared using a sharp knife. Careful not to kill yourself with it. Let's go ahead and see if we can remove the pit. Which of course, is never easy. We need the stems, we don't need those. That's a fair amount of work for a small little pit, but got several more to do, so let me get to it. The last one, and I quickly discovered that if you cut it in half and then just give it a twist, you pretty much eliminate the problem of having to dig out that seed. Go ahead and chop these up in the quarters or however small you like them. 
And again, with that last piece to get rid of that seed, again, just go ahead and cut it in half. And just pull out the seed. Go ahead and chop these up. And let's get those into straining bags. Or rather, let's hope that we can get these into straining bags. Pretty big chunks. Again, if you don't have straining bags, don't worry about it. Alright, looks pretty good. Use two bags. Go ahead and tie that off. Alright, that's one. With our plums now cut up, the next thing we want to do is go ahead and take that water we had on the stove and we want to just go ahead and pour those, pour that in. I mean, yeah, I could have just put the put the plums in the pot. But I'm doing it this way only because I need this pot for something else later on. And I need to wait for all of this to come down to room temperature and this thin aluminum pot or pan is going to cool down a lot quicker than just leaving it in the uh, big pot. Plus I'm going to be using Camden tablets so we still got another day before we start fermentation. Now that our plum juice has come down to a good, slightly warm but still close enough to room temperature, we're going to go ahead and put this into our fermenter. If I can do this carefully, somewhat carefully. That's why I stopped doing this on the dining room table and started doing this in the kitchen sink. All right. And of course, we want our plums to go in there as well, where they can do some good. Pour in the rest of that plum goodness. Next thing we want to do is go ahead and put in our lemon juice that we just squeezed earlier. And the final thing we want to do is put in our pectin enzyme. Again, if you don't have it, don't worry about it. But if you do, Follow the instructions on your packet and just go ahead and incorporate that. And finally, just go ahead and give that a little bit of a swirl. Put our cap on loosely and we'll just put this on the counter and just let it set for the next 12 hours. Give that peptic enzyme time to do its thing and then we'll pick it up from there. Now that the peptic enzyme has done its work, we can go ahead and pitch our yeast. And if we can just go ahead and sprinkle that on thereabouts. I think this time I'm going to um, give it a little swirl. Put my cap back on. And for the next three to five days, just come in, give it another little swirl, stir if you need to. After about seven days, we can go ahead and remove our plum out of the mixture discard those. We can then rack this into our carboy, demijohn, jar, jug, whatever you've got, and start the process of secondary fermentation. Every six weeks or so, we'll go ahead and rack that into another another jar, jug, demijohn, carboy, and repeat that process every six weeks or so until the plum wine has become clear. At which point in time, we can go ahead and bottle it and let it age for up to a year. 
before you're ready to start drinking. So until then, enjoy.